Welcome to my Halloween edition of Behind the Scenes. Feel free to pause this video and put on your Halloween outfit and be part of the fun of this little segment. Over the years for Halloween, I have uh, donned a variety of different sorts of costumes. Uh, and I don't have pictures of some of the ones that were particularly fun, like I remember one year dressing up as Pippi Longstocking and I put my hair in two pigtails and I sprayed them orange and I had two different uh, types of socks with different sorts of stripes on them and, and just had a lot of fun with that character. Freckles on my face, all kinds of things. Uh, I've you know done witches and I've done uh, princesses and all sorts of things. Um, I did go through a bunch of my photos and found some things that I thought were sort of worthy of potential costumes, even if at the time they weren't particularly designed for Halloween. I also found some adorable shots of my son when he was young in some of his favorite Halloween outfits. So as far as spooky sort of Halloween stories, uh, one of the, I've had a few sort of creepy things that have happened. There was a theater I worked at in Granbury, Texas, the Granbury Opera House, which has since been uh, refurbished and it's an absolutely beautiful renovated theater now. But at the time I worked in it, uh, it had quite a, uh, quite a spooky history and was famous for theoretically being haunted by a ghost, a ghost of the man who killed Abraham Lincoln, who theoretically had not died and had hidden out and then was uh, John Wilkes Booth was hanging out in Granbury, Texas uh, until his death or something like that. So the theater was haunted and any number of people over the years that I was working there would tell stories of there was one particular stall in the ladies' bathroom for some reason that he was known to appear late at night. Some people had seen some sort of spooky apparition there. And also in the balcony of the theater, uh, people had said that sometimes in those dark shadows, uh, if they would look up to the balcony, they would see sort of a top hat from that era. And there seemed to be his ghost sitting in the balcony of the theater. Uh, we also, our cast stayed at a building just sort of across the street, down an alley and across the street. And this building had been a medical building and a morgue. And there was uh, there were some tales that, that different people had about experiences in there of suddenly seeing some apparition or waking from a dream and somebody was standing there or very odd, peculiar, spooky things. There were a number of those old buildings that were pretty spooky. Our wardrobe area was pretty spooky and I know sometimes being in there after rehearsal hours and weeding through costumes and you'd hear weird noises and and it, it got a little spooky there at times. So I didn't necessarily like some of those all night where the, where the lights kept going out as we were doing set and lights and things like that. I do know that multiple times we did have bats in the theater and they would fly around in the top of the, um, of the theater around over top of where the, the um, seats were and that was always uh, a, a bit creepy. At one point, one of the sort of ghost shows, one of those kind of Ghostbuster sort of shows, actually did a whole segment in the Granbury Opera House in search of this ghost that had been reported to be seen haunting the theater. I don't know that they saw anything uh, substantial, but they sure made a story out of it. I thought I would also change in honor of our theme here. So another outfit that uh, is reminiscent of a costume I wore in France for a themed party. In that particular case, it was sort of a Venetian carnival sort of a party and I was the featured performer. So I thought it'd be fun to pull this back out here for my Halloween segment. Some of my costumes over the year have ranged from 
a baseball player, a fighter pilot, a race car driver. Occasionally I have been able to keep costumes from shows I did. I did keep this lovely pink deal. I'm not sure what I thought I would wear it for. I had it for some time and this was one of two costumes that I wore in a period show. So uh, I think I did wear it for some uh, like Halloween party at some point. Um, and then I would sometimes keep uh, different sorts of stylized clothes because I never knew when I might have an audition where it might come in handy. So I think like most actors, you end up with a lot of things in your closet that you would never wear personally, but they might come in handy for an audition or even for a show you're doing where you provide some of your own pieces. So costumes from shows. Uh, and then I'm doing my best sort of got my sunglasses on and hiding out in Hollywood kind of look, a celebrity hiding out. <laughs> and then always fun, a little uh, sort of feather boa vest that I would sometimes wear when I had to dress up. And then this outfit I had worn in a show in a segment where we were doing, I was singing as time goes by, so we were doing a little homage to Casablanca. That's what this was themed. Also from that show, I did a little uh, Sandra D. I could also always throw on my roller skates and go as a roller derby queen. It was always easy for me to like pull costumes from things that I actually did. So uh, I could sometimes throw on my riding gear. I could go as a, an English equestrian or I could go as a Western sort of rodeo rider, pulling from things that I had worn and used in different horse shows <laughs> and then repurposed for dress up parties. I participated in a couple of Renaissance fairs. So I also at points had pieces from of Renaissance costumes. One of my favorites was an early Halloween party I went to where I dressed up as a bunny and my date had a mask from the Planet of the Apes. So this was how we went as a couple to a Halloween party. How about going as Judge Judy? I think I make a perfectly wonderful uh, Supreme Court judge or a politician as I give a press conference here in the West Wing. And of course, you can never go wrong dressing up as a saloon singer. Just as I had a sort of uh, a baseball outfit that I showed you early on, one of my son's earliest little dress up outfits was as a little baseball player. Um, and then I loved this little sort of bear outfit that I got for him. The thing that I realized when they're young and they're growing so fast is you get these things and you think they're so adorable, but they fit them at the wrong season. And so <laughs> by the time it really fit him, it was way too hot to be wearing it, but it, it did make for a cute little costume for a, a dress up Halloween party. Early in his uh, Halloween days, uh, one Halloween for he, and his little friend, I made them little outfits so they could be Pebbles and Bam Bam. Well, he loved you know, being Bam Bam with his you know, big club, but uh, he wasn't so sure about having to hang out with Pebbles. So there was a mixed, a mixed bag for him. And if you want to be incognito, then there's uh, nothing better than going as a dinosaur and just sticking a big giant dinosaur over your head. There you have it, my tribute to Halloween. I hope you get to dress up as something fun and have a good time and enjoy Halloween, whatever it is that you do. Tell me, write in the comments what you think was one of your all-time favorite Halloween costumes or which one of some of the things you saw here today you thought was the most fun. Thank you so much for joining me and letting me have a little bit of silly fun here for Halloween, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.